In the last episode, I built my own DIY solar power system. If you haven't seen that video already, definitely check it out first. But to round off my setup, at least for now anyway, I want to add some sort of smarts to it. Namely, a way to measure how much energy I'm using and a way to keep an eye on how much power I'm producing. Plus a little bit about the battery's health too. The bits that I will need for that are this Samsung SmartThings plug and an ESP8266 based RS232 bridge for the Renogy charge controller that I'm using. I do have a second ESP8266 that I'm using to or sort of testing, uh, connecting out to the battery's BMS directly, but that one isn't working right now, so I'll stick with the two main pieces that I actually have working, at least for now. Now, I picked the Samsung SmartThings plug because it's a Zigbee device, which means that it works out of the box with my existing self-hosted home assistant setup. If you haven't seen my series on the DIY smart home stuff, then I'll leave that in the cards above as well. It's definitely worth watching as that's what I'm extending here. If you don't have your own sort of self-hosted smart home setup already, then you can use the more commercially available, the standard sort of Wi-Fi type plugs if you like, although, well, check out that series for more info. Anyway, this plug can act as both a smart plug, as in a, a switch that I can turn on and off remotely via Home Assistant, and as an energy monitor to track how much energy I'm using both on the spot and sort of continuous usage. That means that I can track how much power is leaving the battery uh, over a day or over the, the entire lifetime of this being connected, and that means that I can work out things like how much money I'm saving not using the, the grid's power. As for the controller board, this is a, a little self-assembled kit from Tindy, which uses an ESP8266 as its brain and connects to Home Assistant with MQTT over Wi-Fi. It's using an RJ12 cable to talk to the charge controller and gets a surprising amount of data. Everything from the charging current to the battery to the power from the panels, it'll even report the battery and controller temperatures and a load of other stuff too. This will be really useful to track how much power I'm generating and should even be good to let me say automate things like notifications for when the output isn't great and I should probably move some stuff off the solar power system to you know not completely drain the battery. As a note on the BMS controller too, I'm using ESP Home to connect uh, the 8266 boards uh, to the UART port on the, the BMS. Uh, in theory what that should do is let me get all of the information that the BMS normally offers through their Bluetooth dongle and their app. Uh, things like individual cell voltages, uh, the overall state of charge, and a load of other stuff. But unfortunately, basically the, the, the chip that's on the battery management system board itself that handles that communication isn't sort of strong enough, if you like, to communicate with the ESP board on its own. So I bought a little isolator or sort of repeater type board that should solve that issue. I'm just waiting on that being delivered and I've already taken weeks to get to this point. So I thought I'd uh, make this video and you know, I can uh, do updates in the future if you're interested in that setup too. So now that I have both of those things actually in hand and functioning, Setting up the, the, the SmartThings plug is super easy. You just adopt it like any other Zigbee device through Home Assistant. The RNG bridge was a little bit more difficult. I did have to solder that board together as it comes as just a PCB and all the parts you need. And I also had to rewire my own RJ12 cable because, well, it turns out that all of the commercially viable cables have crossed pins, which made my ESP module blow up. So, um, Woo! Uh, after a replacement one arrived, uh, I did end up getting it working. Now, just being able to see the instantaneous usage from the SmartThings plug is actually really useful. Knowing not to put the AC on at the same time as the dishwasher, just to not overload it, is nice. It's also just nice to see how much you know power you're using at any time, but the cumulative count that it gives you is arguably the more useful metric, especially for knowing how much money I'm saving here. 
So let's fire up Node-RED and automate a flow to calculate the cost savings based on the current price of electricity and the accumulated usage. I'm, I'm sure that there's a, a more sort of conventional way to use Node-RED for this, but I'm perfectly comfortable programming in JavaScript, so I'm just going to use the function block and I'll save you the effort of explaining this mess of code that I guarantee you could be done better, but hey, it works, so whatever. But basically, I'm outputting four different metrics. The total cost savings, the total usage, the daily cost savings, and the daily usage. It takes into account the current price of energy and the upcoming change, and will sort of count the total price based on both the current price at the time, you know, up until the end of September, and then separately we'll also count the new price once that comes into effect. I've also since added InfluxDB to save all of my data from Home Assistant because by default Home Assistant only saves two days worth of data, so if I want to look back in time and see how much I've used at a given point, well, I need to save that data somewhere and that place is influx. So I'm also using that here so that when the end of the month comes around and we start going into, you know, the 3rd of October, I can still look back and see how much power I had used up until the end of September and, you know, do my calculation properly that way. Of course, since I know you'll be interested, uh, since having this set up for the last two or three weeks, I've used roughly 40, actually about 55 to 60 kilowatt hours of energy, which at the current price equates to around about 16 or so pounds worth of savings. Uh, I'm looking to uh, you kind of bring that up a bit. I've been quite slow in adding uh, new device or adding loads to the, the system uh, while I sort of monitor it. Now that I have these monitoring things available and I don't have to walk out to the shed to check, you know, what the, the battery percentage is at or what voltage is at. Uh, I'm going to be adding a few more loads and making better use of it. Equally, I expect that during these you know, upcoming winter and colder and darker months, I'm less likely to make as much use out of it as when it gets to summer, as especially since my AC is hooked up to that, uh, I expect to use probably anywhere between like 5 and 10 kilowatts a day, or kilowatt hours a day, uh, you know, during summer, whereas in winter it might be more like two or three, uh, but it will be a, a nice sort of year-round benefit for sure. As for the data from the charge controller, that's something that I haven't had, you know, done too much with just yet. Uh, it's also something I've only had set up relatively recently and actively working, so I will get to some stuff. Uh, one of the things that I'm thinking of is sort of monitoring the production and uh, usage throughout the day, and then I can send a push notification to my phone if the production isn't exceeding the usage, as in the battery isn't being charged enough to, you know, run overnight. It could also be used to tell me if the battery is full during the day, and so I can, you know, add more loads onto it or swap more loads onto, you know, off of grid and onto solar to save a bit more. Um, if you have any ideas for what I should do with all of this, you know, kind of crazy amount of data, definitely let me know in the comments down below. So that's a brief look at adding a little bit of smarts to my DIY solar power system. There is plenty more that I want to do, but I think I'll leave it there for now. Like I said, if you have any suggestions for things that I should do with all of this data, then definitely let me know in the comments below. And definitely check out both the, end, uh, the earlier videos in this series and the DIY Smart Home series if you're interested in setting well, either of these things up. If you want to check out the Samsung Smart Things plug that I'm using, or pick one up yourself, I'll leave a global Amazon affiliate link in the description for you. I'll also leave a link to the RS-232 uh, bridge board that I'm using. Uh, that's from Tindy, and uh, the creator of it was uh, very helpful on his Discord when I had a few issues, so thank you very much. Uh, also, I did try using an RS-485 board on the uh, RJ45 connection from the charge controller, but that one didn't work from mine. I think it's meant for EPver uh, charge controllers or whatever. I'll leave a link to that one in the description as well 
if you're interested. If you want to see more videos like this one, or probably not quite like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards, they pop up. And if you want to support the channel and my uh, lunacy, then you can uh, become a YouTube member, or become a patron, or pick up a hoodie or a t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs that I made myself. Or there's other affiliate links in the description for places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there. Otherwise, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.